Hello and welcome everyone. This is Dr. Rob Van Bergen. And today I'd like to talk to you about how you can ease inflammation and by extension pain through the adoption of proper nutrition. Now, despite what we try to do in today's world, we find ourselves bombarded with appealing and yet very unhealthy food choices. These foods may not cause us issues in the moment, but in the long run or even short term in some cases, we may find consumption of these unhealthy foods will make us feel tired, achy, and yes, in more pain than ever before. I'm sure many people here have experienced the feeling of eating fast food because you felt like it was your only choice and just passing right out on the couch afterwards. This is our body just being overwhelmed by these inflammatory foods. Now, just as bad foods can turn against us, good foods can work for us. And the reality is that we can save so much pain and inflammation and do so much for the health of our bodies by simply changing or watching what we put in them. Now, there are so many different options. There's so many things we could talk about when it comes to diet, but I'm gonna cover three of my favorite things today. So the first one, and possibly the most important one, is to consider what we call an elimination diet. Now, there are so many different diets out there, but it's impossible to tell if these diets are gonna work well for you. And this is why we prefer to suggest an elimination diet. This is a diet tailored to your needs. So in order to know what your needs are, the first thing to do is to make a log of the foods you eat on a weekly or daily basis. So daily before a week and try and categorize them as best as you can. Put different foods or different meals into categories like dairy, gluten, red meat, white meat, vegetables, fruits, sugars, things like that. You name it. Once categorized, you can look at each, uh, you can look at your whole diet as a series of categories and you can eliminate one individual category, potentially um, only temporarily, uh, but you want to eliminate it for two weeks. Now with one category removed for two weeks, you can track your pain and your inflammation symptoms and you can see if they reduce. If they do, you found something that may not work for you. Uh, if you want to then narrow it down further and you've got this big food group that includes lots of dairy in it, you could individually reintroduce individual items and see if it is something more specific. Maybe, um, oof, what examples do I have here? Maybe milk really bothers you, but cream cheese doesn't, right? Maybe you can look at it like that and see what the things are. But the truth is that it's likely going to be, because it is for most people, one of the dairy, gluten, um, or sugar sides of things. That tends to be where people's sensitivities are. These are some of the things that can really get us. Um, but when you work in this way, when you work specifically with your diet and you narrow it down, you figure out what it could have been, even if those things have been things you've been consuming for years, it doesn't matter. It is a buildup. It is a long-term or a short-term buildup that is causing issues. But by doing this, you're working to reduce inflammation um, because you're removing these products that cause it from your individual diet. And you are no longer rolling the dice on someone else's diet. You are benefiting specifically for you. Now, this is far, far more effective for most people. So that's my, my favorite number one thing to start with when you're trying to ease your chronic pain with nutrition. Now, the next thing would be to incorporate more nitric oxide-based foods. Foods high in nitric oxide will actually increase circulation, and this works very well to counteract chronic pain, very, very well. The increased circulation is going to reduce aches and pains, but it's also going to help the body repair. When the blood flow gets going, the body can heal. This means any degenerative pain, pain from previous inflammation that has burned its way away and has just left damaged tissue, can be reversed. You can remove that degeneration and remove that pain. Uh, things like beets, leafy greens, watermelons, nuts and seeds, even citrus fruits are excellent natural sources of nitric oxide. So, you know, maybe grab an orange, <laughs> grab some nuts and seeds. Watermelon is a great treat. It's sweet. Just be careful with some of these things if you're eliminating sugar, right? Because you're bringing in different forms of sugar as well when you get to add in certain foods. 
Next, my third tip is to add bone or vegetable broths to your diet. Now, we have promoted some excellent recipes for bone broths in the past, including uh, those that actually forego bones, hence the vegetable broths, for people who don't eat meat or animal products. Now, I love these recipes for calming inflammation. The amount of people I've seen that have adopted them and added them in with their microcurrent, with everything else they're doing, and benefited insanely from this. Reducing that gut inflammation means you are reducing the body-wide inflammation, which is at the root of all of the pain that you are experiencing. That inflammation turns down, the pain reduces, and not only that, your body is going to be thanking you for it. It is going to be healthier. Now, these are only a few nutrition tips, but nutrition by itself with nothing more can do so much to reduce pain and inflammation. So if you have any tips or nutrition hacks, I'd love to hear about your favorites in the comments section. Otherwise, thank you all for joining me today. Be sure to like and follow us on social media to learn more about being pain-free.